Hello everyone, this is Maxwell, Maxwell Kale here today, and I'll be reading Boris Kind by Stephen Crane. So here we go. I hope you enjoy it. Do not weep, maiden, for Boris Kind, because your lover threw wild hands towards the sky, and their frightened steed ran on alone. Do not weep, Boris Kind. Hoarse booming drums of the regiment, little souls who thirst for fight. These men were born to drill and die, the unexplained glory files above them. Great is the battle god, great in his kingdom. A field where a thousand corpses lie. Do not weep, babe, for war is kind. Because your father tumbled in the yellow trenches, raged at his breast, gulped and died. Do not weep, war is kind. Swift blazing flag of the regiment, eagle with crest of red and gold. These men were born to drill and die. Point for them the virtue of the slaughter. Make plain to them the excellence of killing in a field where a thousand corpses lie. Mother whose heart hung humble as a button on the bright splendid shroud of your son, do not weep. War is kind. What says the sea, little shell? What says the sea? Long has our brother been silent to us, kept his message for the ships. Awkward ships, stupid ships. The sea bids you mourn, O pines. Sing low in the moonlight. He sends tale of the land of doom, of place where endless falls, a rain of women's tears and men in gray robes. Men in gray robes chant the unknown pain. What says the sea, little shell? What says the sea? Long has our brother been silent to us, kept his message for the ships, puny ships, silly ships. The sea bids you teach, O pines, sing low in the moonlight, teach the gold of patience, cry gospel of gentle hands, cry a brotherhood of hearts, the sea bids you teach, O pines. And where is the reward, little shell? What says the sea? Long has our brother been silent to us, kept his message for the ships, puny ships, silly ships. No word says the sea, O pines. No word says the sea, long will your brother be silent to you. Keep his message for the pines. Puny ships, silly ships, no word says the sea, O pines, no word says the sea. Long will your brother be silent to you, keep his message for the ships, O puny ships, O silly ships. To the maiden, the sea was blue meadow, alive with little froth people. Singing to the sailor wrecked, the sea was a dead gray walls, supplorative and vacancy, upon which nevertheless a faithful time was written, the grim hatred of nature, a little ink more or less it surely can't matter. Even the sky and the opulent sea, the plains and the hills aloof, hear the uproar of all these books. But it is only a little ink, more or less. What? You define me God with these trinkets? Can my misery meal on an ordered walking of surplaced numbskulls and a fanfare of lights, or even upon the measured pulpitings of the familiar false and true? Is this God where then is hell? Show me some bastard mushroom sprung from a pollution of blood. It is better, but where is God? Have you ever made a just man? Oh, I have made three, answered God. But two of them are dead. And the third, listen, listen. And you will hear the thud of his defeat. I explain the silvered passing of a ship at night. The sweep of each sad lost wave. The dwindling boom of the steel things striving, the little cry of a man to a man, a shadow falling across the grayer night, and the sinking of the small star, then the waste, the far waste of waters, and the soft lashing of black waves for long and in loneliness. Remember thou, O ship of love, thou leavest a far waste of waters, and the soft lashing of black waves for long and in loneliness. I have heard the sunset song of the birches, a white melody in the silence. I have seen a coral of the pines at nightfall. The little grasses have rushed by me with the wind men. These things have I lived, quaffed the maniac, possessing only eyes and ears. But you, you don green spect spectacles before you look at roses. Fast roll the night with spurs hot and reeking, ever waving an eager sword to save the lady. Fast rode the night and leaped from saddle to war. Men of steel flickered and gleamed like riot of silver lights. And the gold of the knight's gold banner still waved on a castle wall. A horse blowing, staggering, bloody thing forgotten at foot of castle wall. A horse dead at foot of castle wall. Forth went the canted man and spoke freely to the wind. 
When he looked about him, he was in a far strange country. Forth went to the candid man and spoke freely to the stars. Yellow late tore sight from his eye, my good fool, so they learned bystander. Your operations are mad. You are too candid, cried the candid man. And when his stick left the head of the learned bystander, it was two sticks. You tell me this, God. I tell you, this is a printed list, a burning candle, and an ass. On the desert is silence from the moon's deepest valley. Fire rays fall athwart the robes of hooded men, squat and dumb. Before them, a woman moves to the blowing of shrill whistles and distant thunder of drums. While mystic things, sinuous, dull of terrible color, sleepily fondle her body or move at her will, swishing stealthily over the sand, the snakes whisper softly. The whispering, whispering snakes, dreaming and swaying and staring, and always whispering, softly whispering. The wind streams from the lone reaches of Arabia, solemn with night, and the wildfire makes shimmer of blood over the robes of the hooded men, squat and dumb. Bands of moving bronze, emerald yellow, circle the throat and arms of her, and over the sand serpents move warily, slow, menacing, and submissive. Swinging to the whistles and drums of whispering, the whispering snakes, dreaming and swaying and staring, but always whispering, softly whispering. The dignity of the cursed, the glory of slavery, despair, death, is in the dance of the whispering snakes. A newspaper is a collection of half-injustices which bawled by boys from mile to mile. It spreads its curious opinion to a million merciful and sneering men. While families cuddle the joys out the fireside, when spurred by a tale of dire, lone agony. A newspaper is a court where everyone is kindly and unfairly tried by a squalor of honest men. A newspaper is a market where wisdom sells its freedom and melons are crowned by the crowd. A newspaper is a game where his error scores to play a victory while another skills wins death. A newspaper is a symbol It is Fetless Life's Chronicle, a collection of loud tales, concentrating eternal stupidities that in remote ages lived unhaltered, roaming through a fenceless world, the wayfarer perceiving the pathway to truth. Was struck with astonishment, it was thickly grown with weeds. Ha, he said, I see that none has passed here in a long time. Later he saw that each weed was a singular knife. Well, he mumbled at last, doubtless there are other roads. A slant of sun on dull brown walls, a forgotten sky of bashful blue. Toward God, a mighty hymn, a song of collisions and cries, rumbling wheels, hoofbeats, bells, welcomes for wells, love calls, final moans, voices of joy, idiocy, warning, despair, the unknown appeals of brutes, the chantings of flowers, the screams of cut trees, the senseless babble of hens and wise men, a cluttered incoherency that says at the stars, Oh God, save us! Once a man clambering to the housetops appealed to the heavens. With a strong voice he called to the deaf spears, a warrior's shout he raised to the suns. Lo, at last, there's a dot on the clouds, and at last, and at last, God, the sky was filled with armies. There was a man with tongue of wood who essayed to sing, and in truth it was lamentable, but there was one who heard the clipper-clapper of this tongue of wood and knew what the man wished to sing, and with the singer was content. The successful man has thrust himself for the water of the years, wreaking wet with mistakes. Bloody mistakes, slimed of victories over the lesser, a figure thankful on the shore of money. Then with the bones of fools, he buys silken banners, limbed with his triumphant face with the skins of wise men. He buys the trivial bows of all, flesh painted with marrow, contributes a coverlet, a coverlet for his contended slumber and guiltless ignorance and ignorant guilt. He delivered his secrets to the riven multitude. Thus I defended, thus I wrought. Complacent, smiling, he stands heavily on the dead, erect on a pillar of skulls. He declaims his trampling of babes, smirking, fat, dripping. He makes speech in a guiltless ignorance, innocence. In the night, gray, heavy clouds muffled the valleys, and the peaks looked toward God alone. O master that moveth the wind of a finger, humble, idle, futile peaks are we. Grant that we may run swiftly across the world to huddle and worship at thy feet.
In the morning, a noise of men at work came the clear blue miles, and the little black cities were apparent. O oh, master that knowest the meaning of raindrops, humble, idle, futile peaks are we. Give voice to us, we pray, O oh Lord, that we may sing thy goodness to the sun. In the evening, the far valleys were sprinkled with tiny lights. O oh, master, thou that knowest the value of kings and birds, thou hast made us humble, idle, futile peaks. Thou only needest eternal patience. We bow to thy wisdom, O Lord, humble, idle, futile peaks. In the night, gray, heavy clouds muffles the valley, and the peaks look towards God alone. The chatter of a deaf demon from a tree top. Blood, blood, and torn grass had marked the rise of his agony. This lone hunter, the gray, green woods impassive, had watched the threshing of his limbs. A canoe was flashing with paddle. A girl with soft, searching eyes. A call, John, come arise, hunter, can you not hear? The chatter of a deaf demon from a tree top, the impact of a dollar upon the heart. Smiles, warm red light sweeping from the hearth, rosily upon the white table, the hanging cool velvet shadows moving softly upon the door. The impact of a million dollars and a crash of flunkies and yawning emblems of Persia. Cheeked against oak, France, and a saber, the outcry of old beauty, hoard by pimping merchants. To submission before wine and chatter, silly rich peasants stamped the carpets of men. Dead men who dreamed fragrance and light into their woof, their lives, the rug of an honest bear under the feet of the cryptic slave. Who speaks always of baubles, forgetting state multitude, work and state, champing and mouthing of hats, making ratful squeaks of hats, hats. A man said to the universe, Sir, I exist. However, replied the universe, the fact has not created in me a sense of obligation. When the prophet, a complacent fat man, arrived at the mountaintop, he cried, Woe to my knowledge. I intended to see good white lands and bad black lands, but the scene is gray. There is a land where lived no violets. A traveler at once demanded, Why? The people told him, once the violets of this place spoke thus, until some woman freely gives her lover to another woman, we will fight in bloody scuffle. Sadly, the people added, there are no violets here. There was one I met upon the road who looked at me with kind eyes. He said, show me of your wares. And I did, holding forth one, he said, it is a sin. Then I held forth another, he said, it is a sin. Then I held forth another, and he said, it is a sin, and so to the end. Always, he said, it is a sin. At last I cried out, but I have none other. He looked at me with kinder eyes. Poor soul, he said. I, workman, make me a dream, a dream for my love. Cunningly weave sunlight, breezes, and flowers. Let it be of the cloth of meadows and good workmen, and let there be a man walking thereon. Each small gleam was a voice, a lantern voice. And little songs of carmine, violet, green, gold, a chorus of colors came over the water. The wondrous leaf shadow no longer wavered. No pines crooned on the hills. The blue night was elsewhere a silence. When the chorus of colors came over the water, little songs of carmine, violet, green, gold, small glowing pebbles thrown on the dark plain of evening, sing good ballads of God. An eternity of soul's rest, little priests, little holy fathers, none can doubt the truth of our hymning. When the marvelous chorus comes over the water, songs of carmine, violet, green, gold, the trees in their garden rained flowers, children ran there joyously. They gathered the flowers each to himself. Now there were some who gathered great heaps, having opportunity and skill, until, behold, only chance blossoms remained for the feeble. Then a little spindling tutor ran importantly to the father, crying, Pray, come hither. See this unjust thing in your garden. But when the father had surveyed, he admonished the tutor, Not so small, sage, the thing is just. For look, you are not they who possess the flowers stronger, bolder, shrewder than they who have none. Why should the strong, the beautiful, strong, why should they not have the flowers? Upon reflection, the tutor bowed to the ground. My lord, he said, the stars are displaced but this towering wisdom. Intrigue, thou art my love, and thou art the piece of sundown when the blue shadows soothe and the grasses and the leaves sleep to the song of the little brooks. Woe is me, 
Thou art my love, and thou art a storm that breaks black in the sky and sweeping headlong. Dredges and cowers each tree, and at the panting end there is no sound, save the melancholy cry of a single owl. Woe is me, thou art my love, and thou art a tinsel thing. And I in my play broke thee easily from the little fragments arose my long sorrow. Woe is me, thou art my love. And thou art a wary violet, drooping from sun caresses, entering mine carelessly, woe's me. Thou art my love, and thou art the ashes of other men's love, and I bury my face in these ashes, and I love them, woe is me. Thou art my love, and thou art the bread on another man's face, the beard, woe is me. Thou art my love, and thou art a temple, and in this temple is an altar, and on this altar is my heart. Woe is me, thou art my love, and thou art a wretch. Let these sacred love lies choke thee, from I am to come to where I know your lies as truth, and your truth as lies. Woe is me. Thou art my love, and thou art a priestess, and in thy hand is a bloody dagger, and my doom comes to me surely. Woe is me, thou art my love, and thou art a skull for ruby eyes, and I love thee. Woe is me, thou art my love, and I doubt thee, and if peace came with thy murder, then would I murder, woe is me. Thou art my love, and thou art deaf, and I, thou art deaf, black, and yet black, but I love thee. I love thee, woe, welcome, woe to me. Love, forgive me if I wish you grief, for in your grief you huddle to my breast, and for it would I pay the price of your grief. You walk among men, and all men do not surrender, and thus I understand that love reaches his hand in mercy to me. He had your picture in his room, a scurvy traitor picture, and he smiled. Merely a fat compliance of men who know fine women, and thus I divided with him, a part of my love. Fool not to know that thy little shoe can make me men weep. Some men weep, I weep and I gnash, and I love the little shoe, the little, little shoe. God, give me medals. God, give me loud honors that I may strut before you, sweetheart, and be worthy of you, the love I bear you. Now let me crunch you with full weight of a frightened love. I doubted you. I doubted you. And in this short doubting, my love grew like a genie for my further undoing. Beware of my friends. Be not in speech too civil. For in all courtesy, my weak heart sees specters, mists of desire arising from the lips of my chosen. Be not civil. The flower I gave thee once was incident to a stride, a detail of a jester. But search those pale petals and see engraven thereon a record of my intention. Oh God, the way your little finger moved as you thrust a bare arm backward and made play with your hair in a comb, a silly gilt comb. Oh God, that I should suffer because of the way a little finger moved once I saw thee idly rocking, idly rocking and chattering girlishly to the other girls. Bell-voiced, happy, careless, with the stout heart of an unscarred womanhood. Life to thee was all light melody. I thought of the great storms of love as I knew it, torn, miserable, and ashamed of my open sorrow. I thought of the thunderous that lived in my head, and I wished to be an ogre and hail and haul my beloved to a castle. And make her mourn of my mourning. Tell me why behind thee I see always the shadow of another lover. Is it real? Or is this the thrice damned memory of better happiness? Playing on him, he be dead. Playing on him, he, if he be alive. A swinish numbskull to intrude his shade, always between me and my peace. And yet I have seen thee happy with me. I am no fool. To pull stupidly into iron, I have heard your quick breaths and seen your arms writh toward me at those times. God help us. I was impelled to be a grand knight and swagger and snap my fingers and explain my mind freely. Oh, lost sweetheart, I would that I had not been a grand knight. I said, sweetheart, though saidest sweetheart, and we preserved an admirable mimicry without heeding the drip of the blood from my heart, I heard thee laugh. And in this merriment, I defined the measure of my pain. I knew that I was alone and alone with love, poor shivering love, and he little sprite came to watch with me, and at midnight we were like two creatures by a dead campfire. I wonder if sometimes in the dusk when the brave lights that glid thy evenings have not yet been touched to flame, I wonder if sometimes in the dusk thou rememberst a time, a time when thou loved me, and our love was to be thy all. And in the memory, Robert, now, 
An old gown worn in an age of other fashions. Woe is me, O oh, lost one, but for what that love is now to me a supernal dream. Wait, 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 with many suns. Love met me at noonday, reckless imp, to leave his shaded nights. And brave the glare, and I saw then plainly for a burglar, a stupid, simpering, eyeless bungler, breaking the hearts of brave people. As the sniveling idiot boy cracks his bowl, and I cursed him, cursed him, to and fro, back and forth, and to all the silly mazes of his mind. But in the end, he laughed and pointed to my breast. Were a heart still beat for thee, beloved, I have seen thy face aflame. For love of me, thy fair arms go mad, thy lips tremble and mutter and rave, and surely this should leave a man content. Thou lovest not me now, but thou didst love me, and in loving me once, thou gavest me an eternal privilege, for I can think of thee. So that was War is Kind by Stephen Crane, and I hope you enjoyed it. Have a good day. Bye.